everybody, welcome to what is hopefully a fairly special uh, true crime story. I am at the uh, I am at the site of the uh, Hinterkaifeck murders. It was uh, here that one night on the 31st of March 1922 that six brutal murders took place and in recent memory, in recent history, it's become one of the internet's greatest mysteries. I mean, people have become obsessed with this story. It is incredibly interesting, and I'll hopefully do it justice in this video. Hope you enjoy. This plot of land behind this memorial was the Gruber family's home. Now, <clears throat> in early 1922 and at the end of 1921, strange things were happening to me and the Gruber family had a living maid who was saying that the property, the farm was haunted. I think there's a little picture of the farm here. Here we go. It is in German. Unfortunately I haven't picked up any on my travels. So that was just here. Um, the maid the maid was reporting ghostly happenings, voices in the, coming from the attic, things moving. Um, the maid was the one that was here alone the most. And she kept saying to Andres, Andres was the father, Andres Gruber. And she was saying, things are happening in this house, it's haunted. And she ended up quitting over it. It got that bad. And she had been gone for six months. And the family started to notice things. They would check the attic, they would check different parts of the house. Now, it's important to say that the farmhouse was one building and there were several outhouses. Um, we do have pictures, but I'll get into it a bit later. A lot of information about this place kind of isn't there anymore. Um, but I'll get into that. Um, now, like, things that were happening, like keys would go missing, and a paper, there was a newspaper that was on the table that none of them knew anything about why it was here, nobody had a subscription to it. And, I mean, 1922, I mean, newspapers were, you know, like, it just turning up was more of a deal than it would be that happened like 20 years ago. Um, now, the family were a little bit freaked out by all accounts, but not too bad. Um, Andrus Gruber had been to the neighbour. Uh, it's all a bit strange around it, like there's nothing here. It were in the middle of nowhere in Germany, South Germany. Um, there was nothing about. So I don't know which way the neighbour was, um, but he would become important later on in the story. He had offered Andrew Gruber a gun because he was so worried, but he declined that offer. Now, let me turn you around. Now, the week before the birders, the tree lining at the back, bearing in mind the farm was about here, we are in the middle of nowhere again. There had been a heavy snow, and when these murders took place, it was full of snow, it was covered in snow. It's a beautiful day today. Um, but the week before the murders, there was a lining of footprints coming from the forest that you see, leading up to the farmhouse. Now, nobody had been to the forest. None of the family members had been. Nobody knew why they would be there. And 
there was no returning footprints. The footprints went one way. And this greatly alarmed the family. That there was somebody in their home. They had checked around the house. They couldn't see anything. But they were alarmed that someone or something was about. Well, I don't ever get creeped out. But maybe it's because I'm in a foreign country. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've got a chill up and down the spine, which is very unusual for me doing any of these stories. So, lots of strange happenings, lots of strange occurrences happening at the property. But on 31st of March, all six members were brutally slain. The, the maid who quit, a maid quit, and they spent six months finding the maid. It was her first shift the day before, and she was brutally murdered. Um, as a unfortunate time to get a job. Um, they were all murdered. Um, Joseph, all right, let's go through the family. Andres Gruber was the father. He had a wife, Gazelia. Um, they had a daughter called Victoria. Victoria had two children. Gazelia, who was seven, Joseph. I don't like it. It was two, two years old. And the living maid. They were all butchered on this night. Um, Joseph was killed in his cot. The others were led to, one, to a barn that lay behind me. Um, one at a time they went to the barn and they were murdered. I'm getting a really big chill up and down my spine. <laughs> this is not good. Um, they were led to this barn and they were butchered. They were murdered. Brutally murdered. And they were piled on top of each other and um, buried in straw. Now, some reports say that Kazelia, the seven-year-old, wasn't killed. Um, she was attacked and left for dead, but she hadn't died. And there were reports that she was buried under the straw with dead bodies of her family. And obviously she was stressed and had a, had a breakdown. I mean, who wouldn't have a breakdown, no matter what age you are? But she she pulled clumps of hair of her hair out and she was left and yeah that's really grim. Um, probably one of the biggest mysteries of the whole thing is I think you know, this is the thing that people find creepy that the guy didn't or the person the perpetrator didn't leave the house. He or they stayed in the farm for the next four days. The bodies weren't found for four days, but the farm had been lived in. And somebody had milked the cows, fed the animals, had been having fires, the neighbours said. There had been fires the last few days, people had been in there. Um, there were signs that people had been eating very recently. Um, <clears throat> somebody had come round to fix a feeder at the property. And the guy that was fixing it said that the dog was out and in, but there's nobody in and he just felt it was all a bit weird. So he went to the neighbors and they went round and they checked and they found the bodies. Um, so early morning, April 4th, shots went out in a Memphis sky. So April the 4th, me singing U2 songs here. April the 4th, it was, um, they were found. It wasn't until April the 5th that the police first came to the property when it's going to start getting a bit weird. Andrews Gruber, the father, was actually the father of Victoria, his daughter's kid. And he'd been in prison for incestuous relationships. And he wasn't popular in the community for bringing such a reputation to such a quiet area. So there's a thousand reasons. There's a thousand... I think that's why it's such a involving mystery that's created films and books and all sorts of been written about it got people like a folk tale in Bavaria we're in Bavaria a folk tale persists that the devil came and visited the family that night um, that's why it left footprints in the snow and oh I got another chill um, they couldn't find a murder weapon they didn't find a murder weapon until a year after the murders when they were clearing up um somebody found a 
Matlock, which was basically you and I would think of as a pickaxe. And Andreas himself, the father, had made and built the pickaxe. Um, over a hundred people were questioned, but nobody's ever been brought to justice. And along with the paranormal um, tale, um, what people think paranormal activities going on in the house, they were slain by something more than someone. Um, there's lots of other rumours. Um, Lorenz Steinbauer, he was the neighbour. Um, he had wanted a relationship with Victoria, the daughter, and Andreas had uh, point blank refused that they could have a relationship. So we think that could have been a reason. Other rumours persist that he, the neighbour Lorenz, was the, the paternal father to one of the children. Andreas, if he didn't like him enough, being incestuous and everything, he was a Nazi sympathiser. Since 1922, the Nazi party were getting going. They were in, they were in government. They went in power, but um, rumours exist or persist that some people that weren't too fond of the Nazi party had um, killed him and killed the family. Other rumours persist that the Nazis had done it. One of the earliest versions of Nazi genocide, but the argument against that is why would the Nazis kill a supporter when they were a almost a, a minority party at the time, probably after all the all the, uh, the supporters that they could get. Um, and the Nazis would often uh, find rural places as hideouts and this is very rural and there's over a hundred uh, hundreds of examples of Nazis uh, having hideouts in places like this rural places but again I mean they probably would have gone for somebody that wasn't a Nazi um, strong rumours persist that there was more than one killer here of how brutal it was. Um, a Joseph Blartel had escaped from hospital uh, in 1921, a local or a nearby mental hospital, and it's said that he was in the area at the time. There is a notorious Friedrich Harmon, who was a prolific murderer in the 1920s. He was around this area at the time, but nobody knows. In 2007, 2007 the case was reopened um, but lots of lots of problems exist with um, investigating this case the buildings that were here were all torn down and at the time of them being torn down the police there was only one the only things in existence about the church was one picture which is on the board there um, the police had done a sketch and there was another sketch, so there was two sketches and one picture. So it's hard to investigate because nobody knows how big the property was or anything really. And also the family of the Grubers, their heads were taken, they were decapitated and they were taken for analysis and the heads got lost. Um, they were all buried without their heads and so nobody knows what happened to the heads, but 1920s, I mean, there are the war was like 15 years later so lots of things got ruined destroyed lost um for eternity so things like that like you won't ever find um yeah the groovers had left no will that's why they got torn down fairly quickly i want to say that they got torn down um but i don't know that for sure um one question i've got is the paranormal aspect to this which seems so popular amongst people the only reason we know about that is um the lorenz stein the, the neighbor he said that uh, andreas had told him about the paranormal goings on and everything and he's a potential suspect so he could just be saying old any old nonsense and through doing research like the maid that first reported the hauntings and the the paranormal bit 
I can't see anything that he was ever questioned by the police. Was that verified? Have we only got somebody who was prime suspect saying this is what happened and um, he um, and nothing about the maid who quit because of how terrifying it was here. Uh, yeah, so interesting. That's what always puzzled me about this case. Memorial reads. Memorial for Hinterkaifeck in the immediate in, in the immediate vicinity of the crime. The family Gabrielle Gruber fell victim here on the 31st of March 1920. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed. Um, please like and subscribe. I came to the middle of nowhere to do this story. Uh, I am in the sticks of Bavaria. Oh, you know me. I like being in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. It's one of those uh, really weird tales that have grown since the internet's been a thing. Um, it's really infamous uh, and uh, very popular internet story now. It's a real life story. Um, but now, I believe, oh, hey, very close. I just went to film the uh, the cross and um, the uh, loud bird that's been singing throughout the video just stopped, which I found quite weird. Quite a weird place, I'm not a big fan, I'll be honest. And now it's used as a, quite a predominant side for me. Everybody's crazy for the bikes. And I think this is just a little spot now that people come and rest. And Read about the tragedy before they go on to their next location. Yeah, so, actually, been to some weird places in uh, my my time of doing videos. Been to the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. Probably the weirdest I've ever felt was here. Um, not really sure why. Got a chill a few times. Anyway, it's very peaceful here.